I hate children. Not the main focus of this video, but something I wanted to toss out to the crowd and see what kind of feedback I get. Specifically, I hate when they brag to me about normal everyday stuff that I could do easily. Like, oh, Uncle Tucker, come take a look at me while I do a handstand in the water. Like, yeah, dude, that's a wildly easy activity. If you want to impress me, jump off your roof into the shallow end of the pool and evade paralysis. Then I'll be impressed. Or even when they're younger and they're like, Uncle Tucker, I learned my ABCs. I mean, first of all, so did I. That's light work to a man like me. You're not impressing anybody. And secondly, you didn't actually learn your ABCs. You memorized it. And there's a big different. Newsflash, little Tommy. L M N O P is not a letter. You think that's all one thing. They're separate letters, but you don't know that because you're a dumb, dumb kid. I bet you don't even know about silent P's yet. That's, that's the hard shit. What's today's video about? The English language. Good, I made an easy segue. To have a full grasp on the English language is damn near impossible. Even people who are born into speaking English still don't use their words too good. English is a notoriously difficult blend of all these old ass languages. Old Norse, Celtic, French, Latin, Spanish, Scandinavian, Greek, Italian. It's like a stew made of all the parts of a cow that nobody wants. And once you master all the rules of the English language, you slowly find out that all those rules don't really apply to anything. Your fourth grade English teacher was not paid to teach you English. She was paid to give you a false sense of security in this world of chaos. So let's take a gander at all the dog-brained BS that our native tongue contains. And by the end of this video, maybe I'll convince some Americans to learn one other language besides English because anything's better than whatever the hell this is. This is a nightmare. Quick fun fact before this video really begins, I recorded this whole video already, but my microphone fell apart and this is what all the audio sounded like. So, I'm losing my mind right now. Anyway, did you, like me, go to college to learn how to communicate better and still somehow you use the wrong form of your every chance you get? Well, worry not, fellow moron, because as it turns out, most people don't care that much. The rules of grammar, and even the words themselves, change over time. For example, sometimes a society will incorrectly use a word so many times that it changes the definition of that word. Take the word nonplussed as an example. Nonplussed is supposed to mean confused, according to the dictionary and everyone who isn't an American. But like most things, Americans kept missing using it. So the dictionary adjusted and now the word means not confused as well as confused. So it's just whatever that word means whatever you want I guess because in the real world nothing means anything and everything's a shit show. So that being said here are some grammar rules that I think are stupid and need to stop existing as soon as this video ends. Up first we have the classic who versus whom and uh quick question whom the fuck is still using whom? This is one of those things where even if you use it correctly you're just gonna come off as a pretentious douchebag. If you say whom you might as well start also saying you summer in the Hamptons because you give off the same vibe as you know an academic ass. According to the rule book, you use whom when it's not referring to the subject of the sentence, I think. So like when they said who let the dogs out, they really should have said whom let the dogs out. I think, I'm not sure. This is just the worst rule. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter at all. I also wrote a joke for this moment, but I couldn't find a good segue for it, so I'm just gonna say it. Grammatically correct Dr. Seuss be like all the whoms down in whomville. Someone should beat the sh** out of me. Rule number two, starting sentences with conjunction. Ever since I was a little kid, teachers have always loved telling me that you're not allowed to start sentences with conjunctions. Conjunctions are words like but, and, or because. Uh, also or, but I had to use it in the sentence. It's part of the list. But guess what? Your middle school English teacher turns out lying prick. Lying right to your face. Because it's not even a rule. They didn't write that rule down anywhere. According to the Chicago Manual of Style, which apparently is an authority on these type of things, 10% of high quality writing uses conjunctions at the beginning of their sentences. Even respected authors like Vladimir Nabokov uses them, and he Role, well, maybe not well respected, but he's still an author. I understand why middle school teachers would tell you this because when you first start writing, starting sentences with conjunctions kind of gives you the ability to make incomplete sentences. But you know, maybe a teacher should teach you instead of making up rules to make their job a little bit easier. I mean, if you go back and watch this video from the start or any one of my videos, I start almost all my sentences with conjunctions because it flows better. And I might not be known to be smart, but I, I make more money than a teacher, I'll tell you that much, which is actually a huge problem. That's a huge societal problem that we need to look into. Number three in a rule that makes me angrier than a poorly timed stubbed toe is the I before E except after C rule. Early in grade school, we all learned that rhyme, I before E except after C. And if you want to teach a middle schooler anything, you just make it rhyme. Like brush your teeth before sleep or liquor before beer, you're in the clear. So that little rhyme buries itself into your brain like a worm and you just carry that throughout your adult life. Which is great because that little nugget of information leads us to misspelling almost everything all the time because it's not true. That, that little limerick is not true at all. Glacier, leisure, sovereign, protein, eight, weight, weird, financier, seismic, species, ancient society, precinct, seizure, sheep. According to a 1994 study, there are 923 words that that rule does not apply to and there are only 44 that do. 
This don't teach us that then. Why would we, why would you tell me that? What's the point of making a rule that only applies to a very small amount of things? It's like my dad saying, always keep a hand grenade in your back pocket. Like, I can see that helping me sometimes, but most of the times I'm just gonna blow myself up. I mean, goddamn, I don't wanna come off like I hate teachers, but I feel like we could be doing a better job. I mean, it's more the English language than anything that's the problem. I don't know. Roll the ad, I'm frustrated. Oh boy, oh man, do I have a sweet smelling treat for my audience. Or not, maybe not sweet, but like a smoky, uh, flowery scent. It could be described as like vibrant or passion. I don't know, but today we're talking about Scentbird, baby. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that allows you to try a new fragrance every month for just $17. Don't you hate it when you want to buy a new scent for your hot buy, but you have to, you know, to commit to a $200 bottle of a year's worth of a smell at JCPenney? Well, you don't have to drop a whole lot of money on designer fragrances when you rock with Scentbird. Scentbird offers affordable and flexible subscription plans. You can also skip or cancel your subscription at any time, making it a hassle-free experience. Every month you pick what kind of scent you want to receive, so there's no surprises. And let me tell you, as someone who's spraying uh, aromatic liquids on my body. I don't want any surprises. They have over 700 colognes, perfumes, and unisex options, so you're picking from anything you could possibly want. Scentbird carries such luxurious brands as Gucci, Versace, and... Prada, as well as indie brands like Skylar, Heretic, and Confessions of Rebel. With each fragrance, you get a 30-day supply so you can try out what you want to try out before committing to a full bottle. This month, I was sent Blue Atlas Atlantis. This one smells like you're a secret agent about to do a murder, but in, in, in a classy way, like 007. Yellowstone Rise. This one smells like a rough and... Oh, I just got it in my mouth. That one smells like a cowboy who just sat down to rest after a hard day of ranching. But, like, he's not stinky. He smells like like leather, like warm leather. I don't know, I, I don't know French. This one smells like a walk on a beautiful beach and not like the low tide kind of way, kind of like it's like a little sun tanny, a little like golden kiss skin. Use my coupon code BIGTUG55 for 55% off your first order at Scentbird.com. That is just a little over $7 for one order. That is an insane deal you should take. Scentbird, no surprises with how your body smells. Scentbird, I keep giving you slogans and you don't use them. Like I haven't seen them on any of your ads and I think that's, I'm doing it for free. For free. I know you're paying me to do this ad, but I'm doing the slogan thing for free. It's getting embarrassing at this point. Please just say something. So if it weren't for spell check, I would not be able to function in modern society. I just wouldn't be able to do that. I'm one step above illiterate. I mean, at the end of the day, I can kind of come up with the gist of what I'm trying to type. And luckily enough, Google AI is you know, handles it for me. But man, sometimes I spell a word so poorly that even autocorrect is like, hey man, did you just have a stroke? Did you, why would you, is this supposed to be a word? Are you a moron? But you know what? Sometimes it's not my fault. Sometimes it's not my fault. Sometimes words are spelled in such a way that you can only imagine the person who created it was trying to be a dick. So here are some words that are spelled incorrectly and I'm gonna do my best to fix them. Number one, restaurant. Fun fact, never spelled this word correctly once in my entire life. I know there's a U in the mix, but I always, I don't know the recipe. I can't figure it out. I mean, don't we all say restaurant? Like shouldn't aunt be at the end of the word? And I know some of you say aunt, but you're not classy. You're, you're, you're low quality people. So you just go with what I'm saying. It's like I have to fight well, against my own understanding of what sound is every time I spell this word. Whenever I Google restaurant near me, I just type really quickly and let God handle it from there. I guess this word comes from the French, so I understand why it's so irritating and tasteless, but it comes from the word restaurateur, which means to provide food for. But in order to save the sanity of everyone trying to make dinner plans in group chats around the world, this is the new spelling. Everyone just go with this and we'll be a lot happier and safer. Next up, we have definitely, another word that evades me like El Chapo in a tunnel. Like most stupid words, this word is not pronounced how it's spelled, which, side note, if a word does not look like how it's pronounced, you're kind of defeating the whole purpose of written language, in my opinion. That's a much larger topic that I don't have time to go into, but it, it makes me very angry. Instead, it's spelled definitely, which to me, it looks like D, which is a negative connotation, then finite, which means there's a limited supply, and then Li, which makes it an adjective or an adverb, I don't know. So instead of its actual meaning of something that is certain, to me, it just means it's something that is infinite, which... You know, I guess they're similar, but it's still confusing as hell. So here's a new spelling of definitely that is definitely better because this one actually makes sense for Christ's sake. Necessary is another one that confuses the shit out of me. And I know what you're already saying in the comments. Oh, Tucker, it's like a shirt. There's one collar and two sleeves. So there's one C and two S's. Con congratulations. You have a little trick to remember how to spell a word, but you know what you shouldn't need is a trick to remember how to spell a word. I mean, first of all, the fact that the letter C sometimes makes an S sound just makes the letter S obsolete. Why don't we just always use C? It doesn't make any sense. Just give S a fat furlough. Let C take on all the work. It really wants to do it apparently. And I never know which one comes first or how many of which one is going in there. So here's the new spelling. Let's just all just use this. This one makes a lot more sense to me. I don't know. A lot of words are ugly and misspelled and I, I don't have time to go over all of them. You know what? I'm gonna do a little bit right now. No fucking way my fly is down. There is no goddamn way. 
How does that keep happening in these videos? I'm not re-recording. I'm not doing it. All right, it's time to play America's favorite game show, Guess That Obscene Spelling. I had to make a little modification for the video, but it, it's gonna work out, I promise you. Today, I'm gonna say a word out loud, and then you're gonna think in your head how you think you would spell it, and then I'm gonna show you how to spell it, and we're all gonna gasp in unison, okay? Up first, we have paraphernalia, the number one word misspelled on police reports. Now, you can probably surmise this word's got a whole bunch of funky spelling because of how long it is, but how bad could it really be? Well, survey says, holy hell. Good God. Quick question, what the f is that R doing there? Why would they throw an R in there? And it looks like there was a sale at the A store because four A's is too many A's in my opinion. But good thing this word is used almost exclusively by stoners. So they won't have a hard time texting that to each other at all. You know, we came out the gates a little hot with paraphernalia. So let's slow things down with the word liquefy. You know, liquefy, like in a blender or I don't know. It's not a very commonly used word, but it's, it's a word nonetheless. So how do you think you spell that, right? It's, it shouldn't be that complicated. Well, survey says no. No, that can't be right. Where's the I? This is the one time I'm expecting an I and you gave me an E. You're making me look stupid, English. This spelling makes me genuinely angry. It looks like it's trying to say liquify, liquify, which is obnoxious. I mean, technically, it does look like it's saying queef at one point in there, which is funny, but not funny enough to ruin the English language. Next, how about acquiesce? Ooh, a fancy business term. Tucker, you must have studied for the SATs. I didn't. Now, you and I are both probably gonna assume that this word's gonna be a shit show just because of how fancy it is, and you would not be incorrect. But let's take a gander together and judge for ourselves. Survey says... Yep, yeah, that's horrific. I mean, good God, how do you expect someone to use your word when while you're creating it, you give up halfway through? I mean, you have a C right in front of a Q-U. They both make the same sound. You're being greedy with all those letters. Oh, and I see that I decided to show up in another weird ass spot. How out of character for you, I, you little demon. Bureaucracy, how about bureaucracy? That's a fun one. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't write anything down in the script for this one because it's so hard to spell that I did not have it in me to write it down several times. Survey says... Okay, all right, looking at that word is making me burn calories. How is there no O in bureaucracy? There's not a single O. But I mean, Jesus Christ, what is this word cosplaying Noah's Ark? There's two of everything. Two U's, two R's, two A's, two C's, too bad. Whatever. Then we have pterodactyl. Just put it up on the screen. Everyone knows that one's fucked up. It's just like, if you really think about how badly this is spelled, it should make you pretty angry. And then we have handkerchief, which is pronounced handkerchief, and it's spelled like this. It's spelled like handkerchief, which it... <laughs> I'm done with the English language. I'm done with this video. I'm done. I'm, 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 I already filmed this whole fucking video. At the end of the day, the only thing that's important about English language is the fact that we're able to communicate back and forth with each other. So if you use the wrong form of your in a text and your friend makes fun of you, call him a silly smelly dork and just move on. New videos every Saturday and Wednesday. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'm out. I'm done. Good God.